Welcome back to the Original Gangsters podcast. I'm your co-host, Jimmy Bucciolato, a.k.a. The Doctor, here in studio with my intrepid colleague and partner in crime, Scott Bernstein. Hey, now. And our engineer, Ben, is is in the house. Oh, what's good? <laughs> and Roberto, also Signore Roberto. As the fucking doctor. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, welcome to another uh, show. Please uh, follow us, subscribe to our video uh, cast on um, YouTube, and subscribe to our podcast, please. Follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and please spread the word. And we appreciate your comments and your feedback and your support. So we have a pop culture episode today. I think people who have listened to us for a long time know that Scott and I really like to talk about movies and music and culture and how it relates to to gangland themes. And unfortunately, in the last few months, several legends have, have passed. Um, and so we're going to talk about their careers, uh, some of our favorite lines, some of our favorite movies, but also, in some cases, some some actual ties between the actors and, and, and people in, in, in some the cases, they, they weren't even, you know, situations where, where things dovetailed. I mean, they were, you know, with... So the four people we're going to talk about, Ray Liotta, James Caan, Paul Sorvino, and, and Tony Sirico. Um, when it came to Sirico, I mean, he was an actual mobster that right. became an actor. Right. He wasn't just hanging out, with, right. paneling around with. Um, so uh, I think what we're going to do is just go person by person, talk about how we admire them, and name off our two or three favorite movies from that person. And discuss it and keep on moving down the list. And that 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 will be the show today. So pretty simple but pretty fun. I'm looking forward to breaking this down. I think we'll do it in chronological order. I think Ray Liotta, if I'm not mistaken, was the first gentleman to to leave us. He died May 26th. Okay, yeah. So very, very recently. Um, I mean, I can start it. I, I think we're all going to have – this is like Captain Obvious here. I mean, Goodfellas is obviously But I think what we should point from. out – though that I think is is most noteworthy is that Ray Liotta when he was cast in Goodfellas yes he had been in Field of Dreams and he had been in something wild but he was not a household no, name no, by any you know in any way shape or form uh Scorsese tapped him to not just be in Goodfellas to not just be the main character but to be the through line uh, for the entire two and a half hour epic saga that you go on, if, if he doesn't hit a grand slam with his performance, that movie doesn't reach its potential. And to have that all riding on the shoulders of a guy who at that time hadn't really proved that he could do that was a really gutsy move by Scorsese, and it paid off and paid huge dividends, and Ray Liotta ended up having a great career. But I, I just, I, I can't get over, especially that's a movie that I, I cannot not watch when it's on. 100%. It's the perfect movie. I mean, really, it's the perfect movie. There's nothing, there's no, there's no parts of that film that I would go back and change. Uh, and uh, so much of that is a credit to, to Ray Liotta. Yeah, and, and great point how he holds his own with Sorvino, De Niro, and Pesci in every every scene. He yep. holds his own, and that, it's pretty remarkable. And he's likable. I mean, yeah, he, he he walked that tightrope between being believable as a criminal, believable as an unscrupulous uh, underworld figure, but also you liked him. You wanted to be riding shotgun with him for those two and a half hours. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say any anyone else for Ray Liotta. Is, I mean, you think are we all in consensus I, that that that's his best movie? Much, much like Coppola did with the Godfather movies. I think that Ray Liotta, like Scorsese, was smart and he knew the guys that had to look really Italian, and he knew the guys that kind of because I think if, if Ray Liotta, if that, if Henry Hill looked too Italian or too this, that it would have ruined. You know, the studios the wanted thing, to you know play I mean? Henry Hill, right? No, you know, the studios were pushing. Really, really hard for Tom Cruise. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Are you serious? I mean, they wanted Tom Cruise to play Henry Hill like <laughs> it was nobody's business. I Come mean, on. if you read the behind the scenes with the uh, producers and, and uh, Pelleggi, and there's a lot of stuff that's been written I'm in, about. I'm in shock. And uh, they, they wanted Tom Cruise to play 
Henry and they wanted Madonna to play uh, Karen. You know who also heard they wanted to play Henry Hill? Henry Winkler. But the <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, Fonzie. Hey. But uh, to, to mention, you know, to, to give him some shout outs for, for um, other parts of his filmography. Uh, Do you, you like know, Field of Dreams, by the way? I, I like can't it. stand Field of Dreams. It's one of the few. Sports, <laughs> you know, I don't like sports movies. I'm not a big fan. Even though I'm like, I, I it, like sports, I'm not a big sports movie guy. To me, if I had to rank my top 10 most overrated films of all time, I would have Field of Dreams in my personal top wow. five. I mean, I like it. I think it's corny, if you'll pardon it's me. It's so... Any pun. It's and, so Any movie that they'll show you schmaltzy. when you're in school is not... <laughs> yeah, it is corny. Oh, my God. It it's, it's so saccharine. But, he, and then, so... but now Ray Liotta was in... What was that one movie? Like Domestic Disturbance? Domestic Disturbance. That was good. But that uh, was kind of true. He, he was Kurt good. Russell, right? Yeah. That's a good movie. But He's a cop. To me, his his... Two best roles that were not Goodfellas were Copland, Copland which is one of, one of the most underrated movies yeah. of I all time. I love that movie. Yeah, and uh, That's where probably he, my number and two. then Blow, where he plays against oh, type. All right, he plays against right. he plays against type. He plays a, a non mob guy uh, who I thought was was outstanding, and I and mean, was someone that. Uh, his, you know, Johnny Depp becomes this big drug kingpin, and he's going back home, and he wants to show off in front of his dad, and his dad's basically like, "This doesn't impress me." Like, yeah, you know, I, I just love home. you as my son, George. You actually take notes on Copland. If you sit there and you write down the cast, you're going to be like 15, 16 yeah. deep of like Harvey Keitel, right? I mean, but even, Robert like, De Niro even, even below that. I mean, then it gets to like Michael Rappaport, Rappaport then it gets Robert even, Patrick, even guys a little lower than that. A even ton of, Sopra- you're, ton you're, of Sopranos. You recognize Kathy Moriarty. You, 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 everybody in there is famous. It's an amazing movie. And talking about uh, underrated performances, Sylvester Stallone again yeah. playing against type uh, played a very meek, weak. Uh, police officer that had no balls that had to find his balls <laughs> right in, in the, at the by works. the end of the he movie and it, it. works he, he, he and he works. is outstanding yeah. his, it should have got nominated for an Oscar and yeah. I don't I don't know I why remember, he did I remember I remember watching that and I have to admit my expectations were low for his for him being the lead and and he 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 sells it it's he's really good he's a lot better than you you'd imagine Annabella so look about how many Sopranos Sierra. were in that tons of Sopranos Annabella Sh- Shiora was in it. Uh, Arthur Nascarella, who played Carlo uh, in, in The Sopranos, is one of the so so for people that don't know, Copland is about basically a group of police officers New that Jersey. were gangsters, but wore <laughs> wore the blue, and they had their they had developed their own little town in New Jersey that they controlled, and Sylvester Stallone was like their hand picked sheriff who they could puppet, right? Um, and and I'm not going to give it away, but it's it's a great great movie. Great ending, and great De Niro, music. Like internal affairs, yeah. Or and then De Niro plays the internal so affairs guy that's him. going after Harvey Keitel, who's like the kingpin of the cops, the right. kingpin of the dirty cops. And Leota is in the middle of all yeah. that. He's and, one of the dirty cops. And Leota plays a well, he plays a, a dirty cop with a conscience, right? That has a, a a bad cocaine problem because he was an undercover drug cop. Yeah, and uh, and eventually, <laughs> you see how his bad fortunes. Uh, intermingle with with Keitel and what's going on with uh, the the murder of his partner that he blames on Keitel and uh, yeah. and then his his girlfriend at the time dies in a fire that he might have set. Yeah, it's, it's. I would say that that's one of my second. Um, that would be my second choice. I, I would say just a shout out. He's he doesn't have a major role in it, but I like this film. I think it's an underrated film. Is Kill the Messenger. Oh, Kill the Messenger is great. I think so too, and I, I think that's an under, just an underreported story in general. The the uh, Gary Webb was I forgot an that he was reporter. in that. Yeah, he Gary Webb was an investigative reporter. He was investigating allegations that the CIA was either directly or indirectly involved in in cocaine trafficking. Uh, by the way, they 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 were definitely they were, they indirectly. Were. <laughs> they were definitely indirectly. It's just a question of were they directly. Um, and uh, the story of that reporter and Ray Liotta plays. God, I don't even remember what he plays in the movie. He he has a small role in it, but it's worth watching. Um, he's I, I don't know. He he's somebody that Gary Webb, who's played by Jeremy Renner, like confides in. So it's a small role, but it's still a good movie. But but Copland, he definitely has a more prominent a prominent role in. He plays the dirty cop that's feeding Sylvester Stallone 
all the information that he needs to go after all yeah. the other dirty cops. And I would say his most understated role and you know uh that he doesn't get credit for is many saints of newark I think oh that. hollywood dick Maldonado. <laughs> well let's finish up with just a quick two minute roles or, minute or two on his performance I, <clears throat> I didn't i thought he was good uh i didn't love the film as we've spoken about i thought liata uh did a good job of of evoking uh the proper mannerisms and and uh, just presence on screen of who that character was supposed to be. I didn't love the fact mm -mm. that they had him playing twins. I didn't either. Or not, brothers. Not Italian looking enough. Not. Uh, he was only in the movie. I mean, not to give it away. He's only in the movie. You, it, it, the Hollywood Dick Maltesanti character is only in the movie for a half hour. Yeah. No, I, I, it was very bad. But could have been worse. But he was good in that. And then. What what was the one that I, I can't keep them all straight? But he was was it Red Dragon? No, Hannibal. Hannibal that he was in where he, they cut he his head off. He plays a dirty cop in Hannibal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hannibal, they eat his brains. Yeah, Hannibal cuts his. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a yeah. scene. So should yeah. we move on to uh, Jim, Jimmy Khan? Yeah, James Khan was the second. So one. So July sixth, uh, James Khan died. Uh, obviously, everybody knows him as as Sonny in The Godfather. Yeah. I, no, but you know what? It's one of me and Jimmy. It's one of our favorite movies of all time. You know what I'm talking about? The v Honeymoon in Vegas. Honeymoon in <laughs> yeah. Vegas. I was about to bring that up. Yeah. I love Honeymoon yeah. in Vegas. It's a, oh it's my! One of the God, most. And we're talking about movie. underrated. It's a funny uh, movie. underrated film. Yeah. One of the most underrated <laughs> oh, comedies. Comedies of the '90s. Yeah. And he's he's a straight man. He's not he's not doing he's no, not Nick giving Cage the laughs. Funny guy. Yeah. Nick yeah. Cage is hilarious in it. Oh, um, Sarah Jessica Parker before Hamlita. before uh, Sex in the City. <laughs> Yeah, and he plays this kind of gambler mob guy that that basically cons his way into a weekend with Nick Cage's fiance. Right, it's like a decent right. proposal. Yeah. yeah, but like a, a comedic and they came version. Out, yeah, they came out in the same year. <laughs> Oh wow! Which is interesting, right? Yeah, but but Nick Cage, that to me, that's his best movie. Yes, because <laughs> he's just so manic in there. And the uh, remember the. Uh, Say the Elvis, the a straight Elvis. flush. A straight flush is like <laughs> almost unbeatable. Right. They're like almost unbeatable. It's not unbeatable. Right, <laughs> right. And Jerry Tarkane is it? Like, Jerry Tarkane is in it. <laughs> he's at the poker table yeah. with them, and uh, oh, it's good. With uh, he's like, uh, uh, is it Kapa a -ah -ah or Kapa a -ah 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 -ah. <laughs> You have to see it. These are, if you haven't seen it, you won't get these jokes. But he, he turns, the one bar he turns on Prime Marita, he goes, Nick Cage, he goes, can we get out of here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. He, when he's, even just at the airport with the, the woman who's, or the, or the Ben Stein, yeah. who's taken all over and over the different he's trying options. To, he's trying to uh, book a flight, and he needs watch. to get out as no, quick as possible. So and he's got someone in front of him that's just talking <laughs> incessantly to the to the person that's booking the flights. And his flight that he's trying to book is for like five months. Yeah. <laughs> and Nick Cage's like, you're not even flying today? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then yeah. someone threatens him. He's like, what are you going to do, put me in airport jail? Yeah, which is funny when you watch that now. Like, there is yes, airport jail. there is jail. airport jail. Post 9-11, there actually is airport jail. But so, at the time, that was funny. You know what? So, like, not thinking of Godfather James Kahn, because, you know, if you say that name, yeah, first thing for me is Honeymoon in Vegas. Uh, second would probably be The Program. Oh, yeah. You see, I don't like I mean, I, 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 program, that's just uh, first in my head. I, 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 I really like The Program. Um, is he James, the head coach? James Kahn plays the head coach. Oh, you know what? I'm wrong, though. Um, what do you say? I'm wrong. Why? I just thought about it. It would be the, misery. Would be number misery three. is my. That, that <laughs> yeah, we forget that he was I'm in misery. Another Stephen King movie. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna do. A, you know, I'm gonna go kind of digging in the crates here. Um, thief. Thief is. Oh, such a good movie. Outside of <laughs> Godfather, <laughs> Thief is <laughs> his best role, oh, in my opinion. It's not even debatable. Very good. Uh, I've said this before on the podcast. If you're a fan of the movie Heat. Thief is written and directed by the same person, Michael Mann, and the character that uh, James Caan plays in Thief, which was shot in 1980 or 1981, is for all intents and purposes a younger version of Robert De Niro in the 1995 film Heat. Yeah. Uh, he plays, you know, a professional safe thief, cracker. Safe cracker, safe cracker yep. takes down scores. Uh, and in the movie uh, Heat, the Robert De Niro character is supposed to be from Chicago. 
and the movie uh, Thief takes place in Chicago, and he uh, goes to work for the mafia, and then he goes to war with the mafia. It's it's a, it's such a great, great, great picture. Willie Nelson's in it. Yeah, I'm looking at the cast right now. Dennis Farina. Yeah, is in it. I've, I'm embarrassed to say I've never seen this film. Oh, it's amazing. I'll bring I'll bring you the DVD. Yeah, uh, and then another it. one, from the '70s, which is great. Um, they actually remade this a couple years ago with Mark Wahlberg. It's called The Gambler. I didn't see Wahlberg's version of it, but I Hans think it's terrible. It. I'm pretty sure if I've seen it in college, is it The Gambler or something like 21 or something well, with Mark is Wahlberg? Another one. 21 is Kevin Spacey. That was Spade. a Fishburne. Something. Fishburne I, I'll never forget. Me and my friend were watching it, and at the end, he was like. This is the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> what about the, and it, it ends? It ends with Wahlberg running in the street. Yeah, uh, that's I, every movie he does. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, that that was the Gambler. <laughs> Vince uh, Vince McFally and Invincible, <laughs> whatever the hell. But the original Gambler, <laughs> yeah. who by the way also had a guy that we're going to talk about in a second, Paul Sorvino. Um, you know he he plays a a young college English professor in New York City who's got a compulsive gambling problem and he he can't not gamble like I, I remember one of the scenes he's he's driving home from his class and he sees a couple guys on the on the basketball court like in a park and he just stops in the park and starts betting on these two random people playing basketball uh and I think he got an academy or either academy award uh, nomination or a golden globe nomination for that uh, Misery was great. Honeymoon in Vegas, the program. I mean, we- seriously, Misery to me, I mean, is one of those. I I, I can't even watch it. It's I mean, creepy. I, I, it's unsettling. I, yeah, I'll watch it maybe once every ten years, but I'm so freaked out by. They, she breaks his legs. You, I mean, she yeah. takes a sledgehammer to his legs. It's a movie that you can't take. That's the most infamous scene in the in the film. Um, it's tough to watch. Another uh, kind of digging in the crates um, recommendation from my from me, Mark Wahlberg. And James Conn and Joaquin Phoenix in a movie called The Yards, uh, ri- written and directed by, I believe, James Gray, who also did We Own the Night and um, mm. some other uh, Wahlberg movies. But I really like The Yards. It's kind of a, a noir, crime, gritty New York City, labor corruption. Um, Mark Wahlberg just gets out of prison and his his mom is dating – James Kahn, who's kind of the shadowy union boss gangster, and uh, yeah, Joaquin no, Phoenix plays that. his best friend, and Wahlberg goes to work for this kind of new stepfather figure of his and gets involved in in corruption. And uh, that sounds sort of like We Own the Night, kind of. It's so yeah, it's similar to <laughs> James Gray. Uh, you know, he has a uh, a That's formula evolved, and he sticks though, to it. Kahn, like right. <laughs> you know, uh, you know what I noticed you're looking online. You know, I forgot because I'm a sci-fi and horror film nerd. He was in Alien Nation. I forgot about. I that like film. that. I movie. need to watch that again. I I, I, di- I dig Alien Nation, um, yeah. which became a television show. I'm gonna get that. Yeah, uh, get that on Blu-ray. And then you know, really, what we should mention, and we haven't mentioned this yet, when we're talking about James Caan, because it's not really in our wheelhouse. But Godfather is the thing that m- most people know him from. But the second movie that most people know him from is Elf. Oh yeah, right. With uh, which was a Will huge Ferrell, movie with Will Forgot Ferrell. He's in that. That's a funny movie. He plays Will, Will Ferrell's that? dad. I've never seen that. What's that? But he was was it like Rollerball? Rollerball. That's from the seventies. <laughs> I've never seen. That. And then someone told me I haven't seen this movie, but I want to see it. It's difficult to track down. But someone told me that the only movie that Khan ever directed was from nineteen eighty. It was called Hiding in Plain Sight. I believe he might have co-wrote it as well. And so Paul Sorvino, we were talking about. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give him props for this. <laughs> yeah, I never heard of it. But uh, it's about a man whose wife and kid go into witness protection, and he can't find them. Mm. Uh, and I believe some of the movie takes place in Michigan, in Gross Point, or not Gross Point, in Grand Rapids. Huh. Uh, so let's finish off with James Con by talking about his real life connections to the mafia, and there were quite a few. Yeah. Um, and there was one story that I can relay, uh, a personal anecdote that I've been able to uh, get out into the public sphere to demonstrate how closely aligned James Kahn was with with real life organized crime. But let's start with saying that he grew up in Brooklyn, grew up with a lot of the Colombo crime family, um, very close friends with 
Andy Mush Russo, who just passed away, uh, I think preceded Khan uh, in death by a month or two. And uh, Andy Mush Russo was the longtime acting boss, street boss of the Colombo crime family. Uh, was not was not a small um, player. He was a major, major player. His first cousin is was Carmine Junior Persico, who's the the godfather of the the Columbos until he died a year or two ago. And James Kahn stood up as Andy Mush Russo's best man at his wedding, and Andy Mush Russo um, was the godfather to Scott Kahn. Uh, He's uh, another actor. James is most uh, well-known son yeah. who was uh, in Hawaii Five-0, was in some good movies, was in Entourage, was in Varsity Blues, Boiler Room, uh, Ocean's Eleven. And uh, so he was very, very tight with Andy Mush Russo. Uh, there's, a, there's a famous, I think a famous FBI surveillance photo of that wedding yeah. with Andy Mush Russo and his bride coming out and being welcomed by like the bridal party and Jimmy Conn's right next to him. And who was these that they caught Jimmy Kahn on surveillance in Little Italy having dinner with people? Was that was that Russo yeah, or was that someone else? Those were the Columbos. And then he was also very close friends with a guy named Ronnie Lorenzo, who is allegedly a made member of the Bonanno crime family that runs or at one point ran Bonanno affairs in L.A. And uh, he opened up a in the 80s. He opened up a restaurant and club in Malibu called Splash. And it was a very popular uh, social venue for for Hollywood types. There was a lot of drugs going through there. Uh, Ronnie Lorenzo ended up getting popped for wholesale cocaine trafficking through Splash. And uh, Jimmy Kahn testified as a character witness uh, for Ronnie Lorenzo. The the last thing I'll uh, the last anecdote I'll, I'll tell, and this was something that I came across personally. Um, and it, and it goes back to the movie Thief. So when I was researching my book, Family Affair, which is about the Chicago Mafia and the real story behind the movie Casino, I interviewed uh, over a dozen retired FBI agents and, and uh, Chicago Police Department organized crime investigators. And I came across one um, former pair of police detectives, um, FBI agents that were partners and they told me a, an interesting James Kahn story that, again, I've written about. You can find it online. Uh, so Jimmy Kahn was in Chicago preparing to play the, char- the, main, the main character in Thief. He was researching the role of what a real-life safe cracker is, someone who takes down scores. Um, and through, I think through his connections in New York, I could be, he could have had connections in Chicago, I'm not sure. But he got hooked up with the Chicago outfit, Chicago mob, uh, got linked in with a a South Side Chinatown burglary crew uh, run by Frankie Breeze Calabrese and Ronnie Jarrett. It doesn't seem like, wouldn't you say, I mean, I'm I'm not an expert, but I get the sense that Chicago guys for mafia are way more involved in burglaries. Yeah, shit like that than like no, the, New York or Detroit guys. Yeah, is that, well, is that safe? Yes, to say? I think the, the the theft raft, the theft racket in Chicago has always been a staple. Yeah, of the, the outfit. outfit when in, okay. in places like Detroit, Chicago, Philly. Not to say that that there aren't burglary sure. rings and units that are connected to the mob, but it, it's not as bread and butter. Yeah, it's a good point. I, okay, it's yeah. a good point. So uh, the 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 feds and uh, CPD OC unit are up on a wire in a Chinatown. Uh, Chinatown and South Side of Chicago are, are synonymous in terms of when you're talking about the mafia. When you say the Chinatown crew or the South Side crew, you're talking about the same group or the 26th Street crew. It's all the same guys because Chinatown's right in the middle of the South or is the part of the South Side where a lot of the mob activity has always taken place. Khan was hanging out with these guys at a social club and the feds and CPD are up on a wire and they hear the plans for Khan to go on a job <laughs> with oh, this South Side burglary crew oh, uh, that evening, they're going to go knock over some jewelry yeah. stores and or Harry Carey. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, according to these law enforcement, these retired law enforcement uh, figures, they said we intercepted him leaving the Drake Hotel 
The Drake Hotel uh, at that point was the most was the fanciest hotel in Chicago. Cobb salad. Still, it's still one of the invented the Cobb salad. <laughs> still, still one of still one of the premier, uh, you know, hotel and in, in lodging um, uh, businesses uh, establishments in Chicago. And they intercepted him in the lobby of the of the Drake, and they said, "Jimmy, we know where you're going." Yeah. And we're going to tell you right now to turn around and go back up to your suite because if you don't listen to us and you go on this job with the Southside crew, you're going to be on the cover of every Chicago newspaper tomorrow. We're going to arrest you. We're going to perp walk you. Wow. Um, Did Khan tip them off so the guy, burglars didn't go? Didn't I don't. Tip? I don't. I don't know about that. I just yeah. know that he, he didn't. Probably did. I he didn't think. end up going. But uh, they caught him on this wire discussing going on a on a job, and maybe he went on a job before that. Maybe he went a jo- uh, met on a job after that. Yeah. But that that night he didn't. Hey, hey listen, it's right? method acting. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> Johnny Russo to... never got that wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so let me ask you something. Well, first of all, one thing that's interesting about Khan's affiliations is, as far as I can tell, he was always unapologetic. Right. about it. Mm-hmm. You know, some guys are like, oh, well, it's not what you think, or I don't really know that. He was like, yeah. yeah. I'm these are my buddies. They're these my, are my buddies. buddies. Like, yeah. what, like, He's like a Chuck Zito. He grew up with, I mean, and he legitimately grew up with these guys. This yeah. wasn't a guy that became famous and then sought the company of mob yeah, guys. Yeah, right, right. This was a guy that was surrounded by mob guys his whole life. Yeah. And then became an actor known for playing mob well, guys. Well, I've seen interviews with him where they talk about, you know, how you know, when you play San, uh, Santino Corleone, and and even though you're not Italian, you, you you for all intent and purpose, you you seem Italian. And he was like, because that's who I grew I grew up all around. He's like, like it it wasn't much of a stretch as you would think because I was immersed in Italian culture growing up. My friends, my neighbors. So and the fact that he was best friends with a boss, yeah, that's different than being best friends with a mob guy. Yeah, and so being best friends think, with. A, do you think yeah. James Conn ever met John Gotti? Yes. Without question, I'm sure he met John. Yeah, Gatti. probably. I'm sure he met John. Because Gotti was friends with Mickey Rourke and Anthony Quinn. Right. <laughs> so yeah. Those guys. Uh, yeah, was they friendly they with showed them. up at the trials. Right. Yeah. Uh, let me add, w- one more thing about James Conn, though, and uh, because I don't know if you watch this, I don't think I don't think Roberto watched it either. But I don't love the series, but our audience may want to check it out. It was only two seasons. It was Magic City. Yeah, you and know what? James I still Conn haven't I had to watch that. I haven't seen it. My my dad watched it and liked it. He's he's in he he has a cameo in season one, and he's he's a more of a major character in season two. It's like Miami in the sixties. Yeah, it had a lot of potential, I think. So James Conn plays like the Chicago like Jewish guy for the outfit who like kind of pulls the strings in in Florida. And what I liked about it was sort of the uh, Easter eggs they were putting out there, but the show got canceled, so they didn't develop it. But, like, there's one episode in season two where Jack Ruby shows up. Not a major wow. party, just shows up. And then and then there would be references in season two to Santo, which they didn't show him, but you knew that was, you knew that was Traficante. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, and yeah. so they're, for, for a geek like me, I'm like, oh, this is, they're going to they're gonna unpack this and develop this. But it's, it's mostly about the it's Jewish gangsters full, in Miami. It's got a full bar. He's got any telephone? You want to make a phone call? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's his, that's uh, uh, Lefty Guns and Donnie Brasco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same, right. He, he's really see friend of ours, friend of yours. You, you get see the that? irony. Yeah, right. yeah, right. And uh, right. you go to the bow. I stay in the stern. Uh, yeah, I don't even want to see you. <laughs> you go to the bow. You go to the bow. <laughs> We're Sunny Black. We're Sunny Black. <laughs> you with me now? Sonny Black takes him. He with me. You know, yeah, Lefty gets a couple. Uh, what is this? Paul couple, Sorvino gets, gets a couple whiskey sours in him. Uh, yeah, and that. Yeah, gets what, a couple of spritzes. In spritzes in him. I know you like him, but he's holding you back. That's it. It's that's done. it. That's it's it. Done. It's done. See, that's again. We like Michael Madsen. Uh, we Roberto was saying he wasn't sold on him, but I I love. Oh, he's Madsen one of my all time favorite. He's one of my black. He's one of my all time favorite I, characters. He, I think he sells it. I I think he's a mafia guy in that in that movie. So okay, so the third one was no Tony uh, Paulie Walnuts is the third. Yeah, Tony so Sirico. Oh. Tony Sirico died July eighth, uh, two days after Khan. Um, you know, known for playing Paulie Walnuts in The Sopranos, as we said at the beginning of the podcast, he was a real mob guy that yeah. became an actor. Um, later in life, he he did uh, a couple years in in prison. I think he has a maybe more than a couple years. He's got a rap sheet of like you know, twenty five, twenty six arrests. And you had that story on him, correct? Yeah, that and was, we can uh, talk about that in a second about okay. his his connection to a very infamous uh, unsolved murder of an L.A. actress back in nineteen seventy seven. His fingerprints were found at the crime scene. Uh, we can talk about that 
but let's kind of just first honor him before we soil his <laughs> reputation. <laughs> no, but we love we love Polly. Uh, yeah. I mean that without and I don't I don't even think you can argue that Polly Walnuts was one of the greatest characters ever yeah, TV characters birthed. Ever. Now I wouldn't just say TV. One of the greatest characters ever birthed in the mob movie or TV genre. Even just TV in general, like yeah, yeah. to me he's up there with like Kramer yeah. from like Seinfeld, yeah. or, you know, just mm-hmm. um, legend. And and so I would say like with with James Caan, we were talking about all these other movies. For me, obviously, his best performances are The Godfather, so that seems obvious. So we were talking about other things. With 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 Tony Sirico, I think it's Paulie Walnuts is obviously his his best role. But he has been in he was in some other things. I mean, I know he was in a, he had a small part in a movie that the three of us love. I don't know if Ben has ever seen it, but. The three of us are huge fans of the film Gotti. Yeah, and we talk about we oh rep that movie God, all the all the time. It's He's such the a guy great movie. Kills the I've, yeah. see, I've oh seen I've seen it and I liked I it a lot. That. Actually, I liked it a lot. You, and seen, you saw Gotti? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Was that straight to TV? It was HBO. No, it was HBO. It was, it was well, HBO. Yeah. That no, was, and then I had it was on DVD. Or I have, but 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 it was on HBO. It was never the theater. Who was the guy who played Gotti? Asante Armand Asante. He did a great job. Oh. God, no one can be it's about that. the rules. It's about I mean, parameters. I mean, Travolta came close. But he was, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my god, I didn't even see the you Travolta You take a beating one. for a friend. You don't lay down. Either. No, it. And I still to this day send clips from the Gotti film to Scott and Roberto because I know I text them because I know they'll get. I know they'll get it. It's 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 so good that I, I, it's surprising yeah. that not many more people are aware. I of I mean, that. he really stu- he seemed to really study him. Or Asante would be like, you know, what's it all about? Yes. It's it all about? It's about the rules, about parameters. About the rules, about yeah. parameters. What the fuck? What the fuck are we talking about here? We're talking about the fucking rules. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was so good. He was yeah. so good in that movie. And I, I'm the one who has to go meet with Mr. Neil. I'm the one who has to go to. Hey, hey, I, I, drink the fucking coffee and the fucking maiden and the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got sit with that lady on Cazzo Pauli and drink the morbid espresso. <laughs> it's just great. But he's but but. Uh, uh, Sirico plays one of the enforcers, and, and then, I don't know and, who and he's then, supposed to be. He's supposed he's, to be he's supposed to be a, a combination of the Carniglia brothers, and then oh, okay. John Junior. and Charlie Carniglia, but they call him Joey Demiglia. Okay, and Dominic Chianese Junior plays plays Joe uh, 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 plays uh, uh, Joe Piney. Joe Piney, and yeah. Big Pussy yeah. plays uh, uh, Angelo Ruggiero. Uh, quack quack quack. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, one movie I want to shout out. I was talking about this off air with Ben. His first major role, Tony Sirico, his first major role in a movie was in a uh, a not very well known mafia film from 1978 Caligula uh, no, no, <laughs> called no. Fingers with Harvey Keitel <laughs> as Fingers. the lead and uh he actually plays a, a mob guy from Detroit really in the movie have you seen this film yeah it's really good it's about uh I'm looking at Michael thing. Gazzo uh from the oh, from, yeah, from Godfather Pantangeli. 2 plays Frankie Five Angels is the father of uh, Harvey Keitel who plays this up and coming mob enforcer who also happens to be a concert pianist, and he has to de- he has to decide whether or not he's going to become a mobster or is he going to become a pianist. I don't know about that premise, you, you, but you you're saying that, it works. I, you, you can get I like that, that on the Who Gives a Shit app. I I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> wow, Roberto didn't like it. I enjoyed it. it says Danny Aiello's in it too. Yeah. Oh my pizzeria. But uh, where, where it, can you even see that? Where can you even and watch Luca that? Brazzi's in there. I don't know. You don't even know. I, I think oh, yeah. I, I think I had it. Uh, I rented it once. I found it somewhere. You can. I'm sure you can find it on it's stream like a, somewhere. Uh, across uh, not if it's straight to oh, DVD. Great. Another great yeah, black yeah, black black, uh, black exploitation movie. I think I have a uh, across 110th Street <laughs> on DVD. Yeah. Oh my god. Jim Brown is in this movie. Speaking yeah. Speaking of exploit and Dominic Chinese, I'm looking at the. Oh well. Oh there's my a god. lot of people in this. It's pretty good. Who directed it? Um, I don't know. Let me see. I'll tell you. Frank Stallone. Frank's <laughs> <laughs> Roberto, it's a James to- Jimmy Toback, James Toback. Yeah, I see. Who that also did yet. the Gambler? Take me and back. Bugsy. Take me back. Take me back. I like. Take me back. Do y'all remember Rocky Two? He's the homeless. He's the homeless yeah. guy. You don't have to tell me that. That's Frank Stallone. Yeah, that's Frank Stallone. That's that. 
is an outstanding song. You want to talk I'm about? Not far from they talk. They, he's the, a great. He was a great singer. The youngins talk about hype music. I right. thought he was. The, 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 the far from over song. If you're a youngin, please go on. Like your, go and uh, right? download that song. He was a good musician. And then go work like out. It'll get you pumped up. Oh yeah. Sports. Right? Yes. The, the sports uh, fan edition. Yeah. It was the the theme song. I don't we're, remember that. We're going down. I used to watch that every Sunday night. You remember that? I remember watching Sports Final Edition every Sunday night. No, and then and then the wrestler uh, NWA would use it as a um, like a promo for promo music. Huh. Uh, So then let's finish off with the real Tony Sirico. Um, Just like James Caan, grew up in Brooklyn around the Colombo crime family. Unlike James Caan, who left, went to Michigan State, became a football player, and then left for LA to become an actor. Tony Sirico became a gangster and uh, was affiliated with the Colombo crime family, was affiliated with the Persicos. Um, did he do time? Yes, yeah. he did. He did some uh, some prison time. He was uh, a member of the Clemenza crew, not Clemenza from The but, Godfather. From the Godfather. Uh, Joey <laughs> Brown, Clem- uh, J- a guy named Joe Clemenza, they called Joey Brown, and his sons, uh, Jerry Green Eyes and Joey, Joey Green Eyes, I think. I, excuse me if uh, uh, any New York mob aficionados are going to yeah. uh, pick this apart. I believe those were the three guys. But I know Joe Brown was the father and Jerry Green Eyes was the son. And that was, those were Sirico's guys. And those guys were at all of the Soprano parties. Mm. All so of the can, cast if, parties if, and premieres. If Jerry list, Green Eyes Clemenza was there. If there's a list of guys that were. Like mob associated guys before they became actors would be Steve Sharippa, nah, Tony Sirico. No, nah. Steve Sharippa. He, oh, he was a doorman at a mob. I mean, he was mob I'll tell, was paying no, I'll, him money. I'll tell you who the real former mobster who became a big actor is is uh, Mo Green from oh, from The yeah. Godfather. Yeah, yeah. For I sure. mean. He didn't. Oh, what ju- was that guy's name? His name's Al. Oh, was his oh, Al's Ro- Al's Ro- Rocco is but his you know stage I name. You know why the first time I saw him, he was on Golden Girls. No, no, he was the first time I saw him. He was on Facts <laughs> of Life. He played yeah. Joe Polnicek's yeah. dad. Yeah. Dad, yeah. yeah. He was like husband. But <laughs> there's something very probably, significant. Probably my favorite scene in Godfather One. I'm Mo Green. Alex Rock. Oh, yeah, of I made my bones when you were going out with cheerleaders. cheerleaders. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's great in that film. Yeah, yeah. But he also, in addition to having a place uh, in an iconic film, he personally started the Irish mob war in Boston. Yeah. That's why he left Boston and went to L.A. Yeah. The Irish yeah. mob war in Boston, which lasted like a long six, time. seven years. It lasted... Throughout most of the sixties, into the seventies, yeah, a lot of bodies uh, and like you know dozens of bodies. Alex Rocco was at they, it was like a Labor Day barbecue where someone uh, disrespected his uh, girlfriend or the woman that he was with, and he beat the guy up. And that one incident at that one bar on Labor Day spawned an entire like decade of. Warfare, and then that guy's guys went looking for him, yeah, and they they whacked someone else, yeah. instead, and then it was a tit for tat, right? For a long I think time. his name, I think his name on in the underworld McClain. was Bobo Bobo Petaconi. Doesn't that connect to like? Oh yeah, right. His, but doesn't that connect to McLean and those Bolger Bolger? Well, yeah, the it Winter Hill directly into Whitey Bolger. Yeah, there's another right. guy that did that. Who? Right, David Ruffin. Well, <laughs> who's from that? the Temptations? <laughs> well, he was a. <laughs> These were some of the uh, Motown artists that had some oh, had dark, Ruffin. dark histories before oh, they I became. Didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. You ever see the Temptations movie? It's, it's, it's good. Leon. Great with Leon, movie with Leon. Yes, with David Leon. Ruffin. Yeah, yeah, above yeah. the rim. I was just talking to today about with above Leon's and Bo- Tommy Shepard plays Tommy Shepard above the rim. Uh, a shout out to Tupac. Uh, final That's a great final thing about Sirico, and maybe the most interesting is the fact that he died a person of interest. Or a top suspect in the 1977 murder of actress Krista Helm, and um, I, from my research into it, I don't believe that he murdered Krista Helm, but uh, I do believe that he was at the scene of the crime before the police. Uh, that's why his fingerprints got at the scene of the crime, and I do believe he probably knew who did it. 
or, or knew why it was done. Um, to give a little bit of background, Krista Helm was a woman from Milwaukee who had dreams of being a Hollywood starlet. And she made her way to New York City and then to L.A. and was, you know, I guess the term I would use would be ingenue. Mm -hmm. She was someone that was amused to very powerful actors, uh, musicians, heads of state. She was... uh, She's in a party girl. A, but she was in relationships. Oh, you guys are saying it nicely. She yeah, was in, she was a party girl. <laughs> she was yeah. in relationships with very, very, very famous people, and a lot of them. She yeah. was a who? She <laughs> was a who <hoo-a>. Um <laughs> We're trying to be woke. So uh, not these guys. <laughs> she dated the likes of Jack Nicholson, Warren Beatty, Joe Namath, uh, uh, the Shah of Iran. Who was you in know, exile at that point? No, 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 no he, he was not. Yet. He wasn't. This he was before, not exiled at that point. This before seventy nine, right? Yeah. Before Khomeini so takes over. She had uh, the 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 ear uh, of a lot of very powerful people. She was a staple on like the you know the, the social calendar uh, in Hollywood. But the thing that made her most dangerous was the fact that at a time when nobody was recording their sexual activity, she was. Uh, she had a whole library, I guess, of sex tapes, both video and audio, of all the famous people that she slept with. And in addition to actors, musicians, and businessmen and heads of state, she also kept the company of gangsters. Mm-hmm. And she was known to have had relationships with both Junior Persico and Junior Persico's brother, Alley Boy Persico, who you know, in the 1970s were ascending uh, to the to the top of the of, of the Colombo crime family. And my understanding is she kept like a journal too where yeah. she would like rank, rank them. her sexual right, right. Like, partners. Uh, yeah, she had a, a, a ranking system. Yeah. And Burt Reynolds actually did an interview. I think it was, it wasn't The Tonight Show. It was another famous talk show in, in the 70s. And he didn't drop Krista Helm's name, but he, someone asked him, who's the, what's the craziest date you've ever been on? And uh, Burt Reynolds says, ah, I was just with this woman recently and we get done in bed and I light up a cigarette and she pulls out a, a paper, a pad of paper. And, and, oh, and right. I asked her, what's she doing? She says, I'm, I'm rating your performance. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. She said Dom DeLuise was a three. <laughs> <laughs> you got Roberto as our uh, Ed McMahon here. He's coming with the Dom one-liners. DeLuise. And he was part of that crowd with Reynolds. And he was an overweight. If people are audience, yeah. younger audience members, he's an overweight. Yeah. He was Burt Reynolds' sidekick. Yeah, Ed McMahon was yeah. a five. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so uh, Sharico lands in L.A. in around seventy two, which was around the same time that Krista Helm came to L.A. from New York. Um, she had some what I would call benefactors. Uh, guys that were, uh, you know, moguls or heirs to moguls that uh, kept her in the lifestyle that she was accustomed to. And one of those guys was friends with a, a, a famous Hollywood costume designer who was running a high end escort service right. with the Colombo with that, the yeah. Colombo crime nice. family. And yeah. that was. Tony Sirico's it, uh, introduction to Krista nice. Helm. Um, so they would run in some of the same social circles, be at a lot of the same parties, and then uh, it, the day or two before um, Valentine's Day 1977, Krista Helm was stabbed to death in front of her West Hollywood home. Wow, and, I, Valentine's Day, I don't remember that. And here, here's kind of the... Was the, that symbolic, you think? or there, There's the belief that this could have been done by a woman because a female DNA was found underneath her fingertips. Yeah. And she was someone that didn't discriminate in her sexual relationships. Right. She had uh, a lot of relationships with, with women. And one of the women that she was in a relationship with at the time was uh, she was recording an, a disco album for Casablanca Records at that point. <laughs> it's like the Studio 54 movie. <laughs> 
Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Casablanca, Casablanca Records, which was a big disco, yeah, village people, big disco, uh, Parliament, r- Parliament uh, Funkadelic, yeah, recording Kiss. company, yeah. This was on Casablanca. So uh, Krista Helm was was recording uh, a disco <laughs> album, and her backup singer uh, was, I believe, her name was Patty Collins, and she was in a relationship with Patty Collins, and some people have suspected that uh, it might have been Patty Collins who killed her. But the thing that's maybe not most significant, but what it's noteworthy to, to say is that Tony Sirico's name did not surface in this in the 1970s. Tony Sirico's fame as a member of the Sopranos brought him into well, my question, in, 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 into how, the crosshairs how, of how law enforcement. How did he get that role, though? Because you have to be kind of prominent and be sort of in the industry to get a role like to get, that. Well, he was in the industry. But he, he was known from Goodfellas. Yeah, and, and from the Gotti and movie, Gotti. He, he had just done the Gotti yeah. movie. Yeah, because they loved all the guys from the Gotti. Yeah, movie. a lot of those Gotti Any movie guy guys that was in beca- that Gotti movie became got in, in the right Sopranos. Away. Yeah, Dominic Cheney, yeah. uh, all those guys yeah, yeah. got in so, right away. So I think uh, that was we'll yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that was part of it. That story you got so right in. So this is the last thing, and then we'll move on to Paul Servino. So it's two thousand and four or five, at the peak of the Sopranos' uh, popularity, and there was like an, a Dateline NBC. Or a forty-eight hours that ran on like a Sunday, and someone called in an anonymous tip to uh, the LA Sheriff's Department and said the guy that's on The Sopranos right now who plays Paulie Walnuts was involved in in the Krista Hell murder or in, su- in in the conspiracy, and they had a bunch of finger sets of fingerprints that they couldn't match, mm-hmm. and because Sirico was in the system. Because he had been arrested twenty eight times, right? They matched his fingerprints to fingerprints at the scene, and they had a number of informants that didn't point the finger at Sirico as a murderer, but they said that Sirico was instructed by the Colombo crime family to go into her uh, apartment or her her house and remove all the incriminating. Uh, and, and didn't her roommate confirm that yeah. Sirico had yes. that he was in that apartment yes. the day after? Well, or, for the, the, the day, so some of these Colum- some of these Colombo. How did he never get questioned about it? Well, they tra- they wanted to. He but. never he he wouldn't he wouldn't. Uh, so like back Bondi. then back then he he wasn't on anyone's radar. He they approached him to, to talk him about it in two thousand four two thousand five. He refused to. Uh, you can't just refuse. I mean, yeah, you can. No, if he's not a suspect. No, that, what do you mean? If, it's, if you're a suspect, it, you can refuse to talk. Anybody can refuse yeah, if to you, talk. Yeah, but he, I mean, he didn't. He didn't. They didn't bring him in, though. They brought him in, and he said, "I'm not saying anything. Yeah, I'm talking to my say, attorney." I don't know what you're talking. About. And then they were gonna. Be, he's gonna say, and his attorney gonna say, "Well, unless you're gonna charge him, there's right. nothing more." That, to that's right. That's what I mean. If he's more to if be he's here. not a, enough to charge him, right? Then. We but know I, your fingerprints were there. But I, we know you know something, but there's not enough to charge. I would say it. It sounds to me like, and I I don't know as much as Scott, but I've read Scott's reporting and some other things. It sounds to me like. Quite possibly was a crime of passion, and the Tony Sirico part is just a cover up thing to protect the Colombo's interest in case there's any uh, what would you say like incriminating information. I don't think it doesn't seem to me like the Colombo's would have any re- like have anything to do with her actual murder. It seems to me more likely it was a crime of passion, a, a, but, a jaded lover, ex lover, or something like but that. But the Columbos would have an interest in getting their hands on those sex tapes. That's what, right, one hundred percent for both extortion purposes. Yeah, and who knows how many gangsters were, you know, on those sex tapes. Yeah, but she had. It seems like she had any number of people would have been interested yes. in in knocking her off. Yes, but the but the the not to get Wait, go she, down the. Was she an attractive woman? Very attractive. Yeah, yeah. Very attractive. <laughs> but the the uh, just had to ask. If you go, well, to- I don't think you could date all those type of people without being an attractive. I mean, is Jack Nicholson and Warren Beatty going to waste their time with someone that isn't attractive? True, especially yeah. at that point. Yeah, she was pretty hot. Yeah. But uh, I said, honey, what you got right now is a lottery ticket. Okay, <laughs> what's that from? I don't get that reference. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but the uh, you are off the rails. Right? Um, the um. <laughs> <laughs> the the actual the the actual uh, the killing of her is not mob. Protocol. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look match. like a mob hit. It, yeah. It's uh, it was a violent. St- it was like Jack the Ripper more right. than like uh, that's not the mob's mo- modus operandi. So yeah. I think it was a, a crime of passion. But Sirico being over there within hours of her <laughs> turning up dead is certainly suspicious, right. uh, and seems to indicate that the Columbos had an interest in uh, removing any incriminating information from her apartment. But yeah, he wouldn't talk about it. 
So let's move on to Paul. He said he didn't even know it, right? He was like, I don't, I don't. Yeah, he was like. He did make I, some comments to somebody. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. And then oh, this is uh, a, re- a recount, a recounting of his interview was, I don't know what you're talking about. And then they like threw a picture of her in front of him and said, oh, this woman got killed in 1970. He's like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember her being killed, but I don't know who she is. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to talk to you. If you got anything more, talk to my attorney. Right. Right. So uh, let's move on to Paul Sorvino. What a what a great uh, what a great actor and what a what a a tremendous kind of statesman for Hollywood and and in this in the world of of mob acting he was like a diplomat almost I feel I mean I I love Paul Sorbino everything the guy's ever done ever did dum, 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 and he died dum, on dum, uh, dum, July twenty fifth. Yeah, he was on. What was that show? Law, Law and Order. Law and Order. Yeah, he was always on that. He was the yeah. second partner. Um, I think he was on it for two or three years. I was, he was only on it for two years. It started. Uh, it started off Chris Noth and George DeSunza, uh, and then George DeSunza got killed off, and they brought Paul Sorvino on, and then Paul Sorvino, the character, I think retires, and they bring on Jerry Orbach, Lenny Briscoe, who's on for the next like. Who was? Years. Who was that? But uh, with Joy Joy Gallo. <laughs> another <laughs> actor that liked Joe to hang Gallo, out with gangsters right? and was right. with Joy right. Gallo when he got killed. Unlike oh, unlike Frank Sheeran. Right. <laughs> oh my god. He, he was actually there. And Jerry Orbach was also in Dirty Dancing. We were talking about that off air. He played the dad. He played oh, Doc. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he played the doctor. Right. I'm looking at Paul Servino's um <laughs> obviously Goodfellas is is the uh you know, I think probably everyone's favorite, but what would you say? I'm not, I'm actually not as familiar with his other. Um, Can I just say really quick before I leave? Because I gotta go. Let me. My favorite, Paul Sorvino, is Money Talks. Yeah, I was. Chris Tucker. I was about to say that. Love like, that movie. You don't consider you know comedies when you're talking about Paul Sorvino. Um, I've never but seen it. I got Money watch. Talks. Everyone, when they talk no, about, I, I showed that to Jimmy before. It, it was uh, he was um, he pretended to be. <laughs> He pretended to be Victor Moan's kid. Victor Moan's son, Victor Moan Jr. <laughs> With Diane Carroll. That's why he was black. <laughs> no, but everyone knows Chris Rock from the Rush Hour films. Chris Tucker. But money, what did I say? Sorry. Everybody knows Chris Tucker from the Rush Hour films, but he, he would not have gotten Rush Hour if it hadn't have been for Money Talks. I don't even remember that film. Mo- and Money Talks, you guys talk And Money about. Talks to me is a, is a superior film and a funnier Very film good. than Very both good. Rush Hours. And he and Paul Servino plays the uh, father of Charlie Sheen and Heather Locklear are getting married, and Paul Servino is Heather Locklear's dad. They play like they actually play Charlie Sheen and Heather. Heather no, Locklear? they they play a uh, no, they play a fictional oh, okay, couple. Okay, and and uh, um, Chris Tucker plays a guy that is going to give Charlie Sheen, who's a reporter, he's going to give him a big scoop, but he's got to, Charlie Sheen's got to keep him hidden for like two days before the scoop can like hit the airwaves. And he starts taking him around to all of his like pre-wedding festivities. And Chris Tucker, who plays this like criminal con man, you know, is in, easily ingratiates himself with Paul Sorvino and Heather Locklear's family. Um, it's just a very, very, very. So, Servino is he supposed to be a mob guy or no? No, just supposed to be a a father of a bride. Okay. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. He has another good film he's in. Uh, do you have his discography in front? Yeah, of I'm you? looking at it, but I don't. I don't. Can you go down? Can you films. go down some of them? Uh, if you could, he was in Reds, which I never saw, but was an Oscar winning film about the uh, Bolshevik Revolution. Oh, that's a great film. I, I it's a. I, I don't know if other people would be like that about John Reed. Right. Um and. Uh, but I don't remember him in there. I don't know. I don't know who. That's a great cast. It he was in the Br- he was in the Brinks job with Peter Falk. He was in the Gambler. Oh, he was in um, the uh, the firm. He yeah, with Tom. Was with Tom, Tom for a very very very, very short, brief. Very, very short brief. Of time. That wasn't a great film though. Book was much better. Yes. Yes. I he agree. played Kissinger in the Nixon movie. That's the only Grisham novel I've ever read. By the way, is the firm. The firm. Yeah. Um, Money talks. Uh, and then you know by the two thousands, you know honestly he was he was just kind of getting paid to play you know mail it in mob roles. Yeah, I mean, he's in the Kill the, the Irish when he plays Tony Salerno, right? Which is kind of a not that great of a film. And then he was in Bad Blood, right? And he played uh, old man uh, Nicolo Rizzuto. Rizzuto. Nicolo Rizzuto. 
which is I I've I think I've recommended it on yeah. here yeah. before. It, it's uh you know very very uh well done semi fictionalized of uh recounting of what happened or what's been happening in Canada over the last 20 years. Yeah, I mean I I when I was going through his uh you know, filmography here, and I, I'm not trying to throw shade on the guy, but, you know, I think of him as so iconic. Oh, Paul Zorino, he's, he's great. And then when I was looking at the filmography, I was it's like... It's not that great, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was a little underwhelmed. A little disappointing. Well, like, it seems like he was in yeah. a lot of I, other I saw he was in a bad... movies. And <laughs> yeah, he wasn't. Well, I, think the, I, think the law here, or, I think the Law and Order one yeah. uh, is uh, s- significant. Because well, he was only in there for two years. Two years. Yeah, but still, he had a significant role. But he had a big yeah. role. He was in 31 episodes. But I don't recognize a lot of these other um, films here. Um, I mean, I, I, I recognize some of the films, but I don't remember him being in them. Like Nixon, you know, with Anthony Hopkins. Well, I remember that really well. Um, All right. I got a question for you guys. Out of the four, who is the best actor? Khan, uh, Sirico. Oh, Jimmy Khan, I think, for sure. Ray Liotta. In my opinion. Or Paul Savino. I think it's not yeah. even close, Jimmy Khan. I agree. It's not close. <laughs> I'd say it's Khan, but I I think Le- Leota was, you know, could hold his own. Yeah. I mean, he's not, Leota's not considered on the same plane as a De Niro or Pacino, and he shouldn't Ma- be. Masterful but, performance in Goodfellas. But uh, yeah. I think he, he showed some, he showed range. Like I said, I I thought Blow, I mean, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm the casting director of Blow... I don't know if I'm thinking Ray Liotta for for the dad who's like the straight arrow dad. I might have been thinking Ray Liotta for, for one of the Colombians. Dealers. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Right. I remember watching Blow when that came out. Another great movie. Great by the movie. Way. Shameless self promotion. Listen to our episode with George Young. <laughs> we had him in studio yeah. in this very building. Uh, R.I.P. George. But um, Boston George. Um, I remember when that movie oh, first wow. came out. I, I went to see it. I was surprised to see Ray Liotta because I was used to him either being a bad guy or a yeah. tough guy or whatever. And uh, I, I remember su- being surprised that he played this like fatherly, nurturing uh, dude. And um, but he, he pulls it off. I mean, he, he was a good actor. But I think when you look at how prolific James Kahn's career was, I, I, I would say he's far above. And then Liotta yeah, would be yeah. second. And the other two guys. Not to throw shade, but I and all I mean those are really like character actors, right? Which is fine. I'm not trying to be a prick, but I think Leota and Connor exactly definitely right. are a different level. If you, we look at the four of them, you're exactly right. Yeah, I yeah. want you to stay away from the garbage. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, that's Paul, right? Yeah. Well, he's I mean he's 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 great. In, don't make a jerk out of me. Just it, don't do it. In Goodfellas. Now, Sorvino, as far as we know, he never had any like real mobbed up connections. I mean, we know Leota would fuck with Henry Hill a lot for like but that was after the fact. I mean Henry Hill was not was already not a gangster, but just to learn about that role. And Leota also had interacted with other gangsters. I don't know if he ever disclosed who they were, but I know as he was making Goodfellas, he talked about being around wise guys to like figure out how they act and talk and their mannerisms. But that was for the the film. That wasn't like he he had a personal social relationship. But I don't know about Servino. Do we know? Did he ever? I never heard uh, anything. I, I know that that um, he put up some money for a movie. Again, uh, a movie that not a lot of people know about, but I recommend highly. Uh, called Amongst Friends, um, which was his daughter's first starring role. Mira Sorvino, whose oh, daughter, she's, yeah, who she's became great. an Academy Award yeah. winning actress. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. And there was a movie from 1993, I believe, called Amongst Friends. It's about uh, a group of Jewish teenagers that admire their gangster grandfathers and try to emulate them. Um, and they get in way over their head really quickly. I, I, I think it's... You know, one of the best movies uh, of that era, even though it never really gained a, Who else a is mainstream. In that movie? And not, not a ton of famous people. I feel, uh, I feel like Mira Sorvino familiar. is the most famous person in it. None of the other actors really made it big. Um, but Rob Weiss, who wrote and directed it, um, eventually helped create Entourage and Ballers and, uh, and, 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 all, and all those HBO, iconic HBO um, shows. And I, I got to know Rob um, 
through the white boy Rick right. saga of trying to get that movie. Made. Oh, okay. A little siren. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. Scott. Hit the little siren. Little Name dropping. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this is the only reason I know this, this backstory is because Rob told me. Um, Hollywood Bernstein. That's what they him, call him. Joe Hollywood. Because I asked him, how did you get this money financed? There's no stars in it. At the time, Mira Sorvino, nobody knew who she was. Um, and he said, uh, you know, my dad and some of his, uh, you know, Jewish mob associate friends put up half the money. And he said the other half came from Paul Sorvino. Wow. That, you know, she, oh, he, wow. he invested in his daughter's That's career cool. and put up half the money for that movie. And that movie, although I don't think it did great at the box office, it was considered a, a real cult classic in the world of independent filmmaking. Uh, he uh, Rob ended up getting a deal with um, Miramax, I believe, or New Line Cinema from the movie. Uh, it had a, When the movie came out, it had a lot of acclaim at the yeah, I'm it, reading within the, within reading the industry, not no, no, no yeah, no, 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 yeah. I feel like I've seen this. I'm going to revisit I, this because I, I, this sounds familiar, but I can't remember. Great exactly. music, great soundtrack. So at some point, they interact with the Italians. Is that part of the plot? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Like, the, like they're supposed to be like the their grandfather, or sorry, their fathers and their grandfather. The main characters, fathers and grandfathers, were Jewish bookies that worked for the Italian mob. Okay, and they think, well, we can just do whatever we want because of who our dads and grandfathers are. And then yeah. they start doing stuff that isn't looked upon kindly by the mob guys. And they're like, we don't care who your dad or who your grandfather is. Right. Yeah. And uh, they end up becoming indebted to some of these mob guys and have to work, kind of work it off. Okay. Which is actually somewhat unrealistic as I'm watching them. I'm like, oh, these guys would all just be killed. They're just they would never have the opportunity to work anything off. No. But for this, you know, I can ex- uh, extend or um, what's it called? Uh, extend belief. Extend or, belief or, uh, because I, I really enjoy the movie. Suspend, yeah. Suspend belief, right? But uh, I know that he put up some money for that, and then the other side of that investment came from some, you know, maybe not so legitimate figures. So maybe that meant that he knew those guys. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that happens in Hollywood a lot, or at least he used to. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, this was fun. I mean, uh, and it's it's sad that uh, for. Uh, you know, classic actors are gone. Mm. Uh, and three of them all died in July. Yeah, yeah. They say these things happen in three, right? That's the yep, sort of yep. urban myth of, or urban legend around it. So, um, and Ray Liotta was probably the youngest out of the three, right? I mean, those other three dudes were getting up there. So Liotta was the one that was a little bit more surprising. Uh, and, and he was the one that was ca- still ca- active. Yeah, right. right. Still, he right. just was in a show on NBC with Jennifer Lopez yeah. like about the uh, Dirty Cops. Yeah, and, and Many Saints was not that old. Right, and Many Saints was a year ago or two years ago. Yeah. James Caan, was, he had to be in his 80s. I, James well, Caan was 82. Servino, James Caan, and Sirico were all in the 80s, correct? Yeah. No, I think I think uh, Sirico was 79. Oh, okay. Um, quite 80. Almost, yeah. But Servino, or sorry, let me back up. Sirico was 79. Servino was in his 80s. Yes. Rico was 79. And I know Khan was. And Khan was 82. Uh, but Sirico, on sadly, ha- had a, a battled early onset dementia. And for the last two, three years of Tony Sirico's life, he was in assisted living and, and didn't know his name. Oh, wow. Uh, and, he wasn't doing well. and that's why he didn't participate in a lot of the Reunions. promotion for, for many sense of Newark. And he was not involved in... The podcast that Sharipa and Imperially did, or yeah. the book that they did, and I remember talking to Jimmy when I first got the book, and I'm like, "Oh, they must be in some type of feud with Sirico. Why isn't Sirico uh, involved in this? Because it was all kept, it was kept very quiet that Sirico had dementia." Yeah, yeah. I mean, I the last you, there's some interviews with him you can see from the you know the, not long before that you could tell he's I mean he's, he looks different I mean and he was like a big dude right and you could tell he had lost a lot of weight and that happens he's getting old you know I'm not trying to say anything but um it's it's sad but I think um, I think the thing that should be that we should leave with with Tony Sirico was everyone on that show besides him was playing a character yeah and if you talk to anybody on that show and they said who's the guy that was most like the character they were playing they would be like it's not even it's not even a question. It's not a debate. Tony Sirico wasn't playing Polly Walnuts. Tony Sirico was playing Tony Sirico. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jimmy Gandolfini and um, Michael Imperioli, they're nothing like their characters. No, they were real actors. Right. Yeah. Do you think that, um, 
I've always been struck by the authenticity of the Sopranos. I mean, not not always, but I think by yeah, 99, and large, 99% of the yeah, time. by and large, they they had it pretty right. And um, it's been whispered that they would they were consulting with real yeah. real gangsters. I wonder if if Tony Sirico was maybe the one conduit? of those yeah those liaisons was the conduit yeah well too. and he had it in his contract that they could not make his character a cooperator. Right, I know. He was one of the few actors that had that pull. Yeah. Everyone else, they could kill, they could turn into an informant. He was the only one yeah. that, that insisted, right. I, yeah, I remember that. Um, and uh, even though I know there's some other uh, people on uh, MobTube who consider The Sopranos to be cheesy and fake. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't entertain those. I don't entertain those opinions. Well, I can go down that rabbit hole. But, but anyone else, if you haven't seen The Sopranos, don't, don't believe that. It's outstanding, and I think uh, um, it's it's pretty authentic. And and Pauly Walnuts. A lot of people I talk to, he's their favorite character. Usually, yeah, I find yeah. it's either Pauly or Junior. Well, those, <laughs> those are my two. two those are my 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 two favorites. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, and I think you know, pretty good. I, I'm not telling anyone. Not Furio is mine. I'm, I'm not telling anyone. Furio. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm not telling anyone Welcome. not to binge watch, but I think Sopranos is the type of show, and I'm not saying you could come in in the fifth or sixth season, but I think you could come in in the second or third season, and you you're not going to feel like you lost anything. I mean, when I watched it in real time, I I came in I came in in the middle. I did too. I, I came in. I came in in the early. I came into the start of the third season, and then I went back and binged. That's what I did. I went and bought the DVD sets, yeah. and then caught up before the next before the next season started. If that makes sense. But when I started watching in real time, I had there was there were certain things I didn't quite get. But I got because, hooked. I got hooked on it by watching the first three episodes of season three. I would say watch it in order, but yeah. I mean, you, you could pick it up. Yeah, there's a lot. The, the storyline changes after um, Livia dies. Yeah, which but, is the uh, start of season three. That's the, yeah. That's the yeah. one I it, started. It does. Yeah. It does. That that is me. The the show becomes a lot, in my opinion, a lot more of a show about organized crime, whereas the first two seasons is obviously organized crime, but it's a lot of fi- family dynamic. Yeah, about him and, and his mom and him you. and his shrink. Yeah, I agree with you. That 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 definitely takes a back seat starting in in season three. By the by the end of the show, the whole. Shrink Tony Soprano dynamic had been completely thrown out the window. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they phased her out. Because because wh- when yeah. did he stop seeing her? Uh, like that was like at the, what the end of season five or mid season yeah, six they, 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 when he just was like, I'm done. They somehow that justify him going to see Mel her feet. a couple more times for yeah. some, whatever reason. But yeah, he had stopped seeing her on a regular yeah. basis. Um, that's, and, in, that's interesting to point out though, because how the, I mean that was the crux of the yeah. show. For, for David Chase, right. that was, and then the by show. the end of the show, that yeah. relationship yeah. didn't even really exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but uh, Paulie Walnut's definitely uh, one of the best characters in that show. So, anyhow, this was fun. Thanks for listening. And uh, again, please follow us on social media. Please subscribe and let us know what other kinds of episodes you'd like to hear. I'm Jimmy Bucciolato, Scott Bernstein, and Ben Roberto's already gone. <laughs> he left the building, so we'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>